Welcome everybody to Late Night Dominion, episode four. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, let's get on with it. So take it away, Roshi. Hi guys, welcome to Late Night Dominion with your hosts, Elgon the Grey, Beatle the Bearded, Muscle Band Blank, and myself, Roshi, the Token Brit. Uh, I'll pass you across to Blank now, who's going to tell you a little bit about what's on tonight's show, and we'll go on from there. Tonight we're going to go over a little bit about housing, our thoughts, how do you get it, we're going to discuss the news in the week, uh, in the week and our uh, awesome gameplay video that came out just, I believe it was today, along with getting to some of your questions from the channel live. So before we get into that, we'd like to mention, if you could, please keep the links, unless that you ask Nixus, uh, for permission before. kind of helps uh, keep everybody here on the same page as we continue forward. And uh, if you haven't, make sure that you follow us here on the Twitch channel. Check us out on Twitter and like us on fa Facebook. So uh, we're going to move right on to the news here. Today's, excuse me, this week's Wildstar Wednesday, Nixus is going to provide you with, was Storm Talon's Lair. Uh, before I get into my opinions of Wildstar Wednesday, did anyone else uh, have anything that they wanted to mention about that? I can uh, have a short and sweet this week. Yes, yeah, short and sweet. Um, some of the info was uh, dropped, I guess, in our previous Late Night Dominion, so it didn't seem as, like, a big of a thing for me, I guess. It took away from it um, a little bit, but, you know, I already knew about the Pell, and anybody who tuned in last week knew that, so... But as a whole, I think it's a pretty good reveal for the community. Um, I'm sure Blank disagrees with me. What? Like I said, we'll wait <laughs> to... to uh get my opinion how about uh how about Aegon or Roche what did you guys think about uh this week's Wildstar Wednesday um I thought uh, our screenshots were nicer than the ones they had <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah okay well we definitely had better exclusives um I mean we knew a lot of this info already because of what we talked with uh Matt about last week but, you know, it's, it's good to, to get that information out eventually. I don't know if they're, you know, kind of lowballing it for something big soon, but we'll see. You can hope. I, th I, I think that might be part of it, and we're going to talk about that a little farther in. I don't know if I'm the only one. That's not true. I know I'm not the only one, but when it comes to Wildstar Wednesdays, does anyone else automatically either say like this was so super cool or you're just like oh that was that was awesome or that was okay that's what wildstar wednesday was this week for me i read over it um i'm not a big war guy unless it has to do with my faction so it wasn't too much about the dominion maybe it'll uh, the interactions with them will lead into some sort of elden game stuff so it could be interesting but i was pretty much like okay this is a cool story. I'd like to explore it in the game more. Please come out now. But other than that, I didn't walk away, and I wasn't like, oh, man, that was poo. So I wasn't let down, but I felt like hopefully something else is going to come out that's really going to knock our socks off. So, I mean, that's what I have to say about Wildstar Wednesday. Yeah. Well, they keep teasing us. With, like, I feel the same uh, as you, Blank. And they tease us with this lowball thing, and then they change their Twitter icon, and are all mysterious about that. So, yeah. yeah well, so some some Mission Twitter Nexus icon. were talking about how it was one of the races, and maybe it's going to cycle through the different races over the next couple of weeks, and then um, introduce a new one. So that was their speculation on it. They're saying on Twitter, not, not to be juvenile, if you will. But it's a uh, little blue ball -y. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say it. It's uh, <laughs> it's quite a tease. I'm I'm really looking for the well, something a little more, you know, a little bit more tickle. That's that's how that's how I'm, that's where I'm gonna put that. <laughs> if, if we want to talk about the Twitter icon, I'm I'm just thinking they got bored of their other one and switched it a couple times. So there's someone over there just being like, ah, I'm bored, puts that in. I didn't think, I don't think it got like some big master plan behind it but if there is that's cool but i think they're just gonna keep switching it through the races maybe they'll post one of the new races pictures in there but like 
I don't know. I just didn't think it was that big of a deal. And everybody was just like, oh, my God, they changed it. Guys, they were calling everybody. Like, they changed the picture. So I didn't think it was that big a deal. Well, I also – this is some wild speculation, but they did mention – that the next round of beta, and I don't have the link in front of me, and I'm not going to make Nixus chase it down, but they did mention that the next round of beta is going to be over a Dominion area. So to coincide with the next round of beta, to have them reveal something about the Exiles, kind of makes sense to me. But I don't really know too much about building hype, how all that works, specifically in populations and releasing information. But it might just be we did it randomly, or it could be it just happens to coincide. Who knows? What do you guys think? I feel with Wildstar Uplink, um, this new um, hashtag we're doing, that they're, they're testing the waters and a lot of stuff. They're trying to find out what do people want to hear, what do they want from us. And I have noticed there's been one or two more people in the um, Wildstar Central chat channel recently discussing stuff. So maybe they're going to be a bit more out there. Maybe they're relying upon people like us and the podcasts and the websites to build a hype for them. Rather than too many MMOs recently have just had this huge amount of hype of how amazing the game is going to be. They've had these amazing videos. I need to get into the game. And, yeah, it's just lackluster. I think maybe that's the route we're going. It's like we've got this really good community, us guys, and you guys are listening to us now. And, you know, the house out there, we're hyping it for them, and they don't need to – always great stuff all the time and i think that's the route they're going down they want fan-based hype and they want you know people to be interested in the game because they like the game rather than some nice cool cgi image like you had for um the elder scrolls you know it's great battle stream that is talking about their their world versus world or guild versus guild what they're going to be calling it and you know the game's not going to look like that and people get let down i feel that that builds more genuine hype because if you look at the community that Wildstar has now, and I've looked, I was thinking about this a little bit earlier. If you look at some of the other communities that were built pre-launches, they were structured differently. And I'm not going to talk too much about that. What I am going to talk about is Wildstar's pre-closed uh, beta community. What we have now seems to be a lot of people that are very they're very much in touch with the other people in the community, the other positive members. Everybody's, you know, very helpful, uh, nice. It seems like they're giving it to us, like you said, but I believe that that makes it more genuine because there's more people who care about the game on a deeper level. You know, it's kind of like I was having a conversation with someone about the people who walk around with their Horde shirts and they were like, for the Horde! Normally you'd be like, that dude's crazy. But if you were a gamer, you could get it. Like, wow, he, you know, must be in some badass guild, and maybe he just really likes to hoard. That hype becomes more genuine, or at least that's, you know, that's my opinion. I don't know too much about how hype builds, but anyone else? Team Wildstar, Exiles, Friendly Redhead. Okay, we're gonna move <laughs> right along sure. here. One fact quickly, nope. maybe they don't want to too much hype because. In the past, you get this hype of this feature being the game, and then when it's not in there, you know, people are disappointed again. That's the last thing I've got on it. Yeah, I mean, I think they've got they've got an internal schedule. The fact that we're all so close to the game, and, like, you know, everybody in channel is refreshing their email boxes. I know you guys are. Don't say you're not. But it's, uh, every we're just so close to it that, and we expect so much out of it, that every Wednesday it may be a good morsel of information, but we've already scoured everything, so it seems like a letdown to us. I don't. I, th I just think we just need to sometimes take a little step back, but because I know they have schedules in house, and they probably that's the whole reason they don't like to talk about certain things is they're gonna drop some huge knowledge bomb. So cool. That's what we got. And yes, you guys that are wondering, Nixus is uh, him and Aegon spent a lot of time doing a lot of stuff on the background that you don't see. So uh, if you wonder why he's down in the corner or why Aegon might be so quiet, it's because they're doing all that crazy stuff. Um, we did want to mention that uh, Wildscrape got some loving from the team from Team Wildstar on Twitter, so that was really nice. If you haven't checked it out, you definitely want to go. Not quite sure how it actually works, but it does go scouring the internet for Wildstar related information and post Come it up on, in Blake. some. <laughs> what? 
What? It's, it scrapes it's, the internet? Uh, Am I supposed to say it wildly scrapes I, I get, the internet? That's that's a good thing. Uh, I just wanted to mention that I do like the, the new look update to it. It's much it's much cleaner looking. It's sleek. Yeah. It's cool. It's not so busy. It, it didn't. I didn't. It, it seems like I want to say softer. It felt like before it was just like these lines with stuff there. Now it's kind of like oh, manageable. It's harsh. Yeah. It was really harsh um, before, and it was very busy and uncentered. They have improved it. Yeah, it's much more so, feng shui. Really? It's much <laughs> better <laughs> with the front as well. Yeah, the, it it's a cool website. There's a lot of them that have been popping up. People are coming up with new ideas, uh, things that little areas that haven't been filled in the community yet, and they got theirs is all up. It's it's really cool. So you should check them out. And we're going to throw a link out here to you that is um, some Wildstar gameplay from the Umbra Guild that came out. It was uh, running around social media, and I believe it's now open on YouTube. But uh, Nixus is going to get that for you guys and post it on up. Alrighty. So let's transition into our topics that we have for the week. First big one is housing and how it influences MMOs. So, if you guys have, you know, comments or questions that you want to throw in chat, Nixus will be grabbing them, putting them on the document. Feel free to do so, and uh, we're going to get in, get on into this. So, pretty sure somebody here has all the information. When exactly do you get housing, guys? Level 6. Level 6 is when you're able to purchase your first house from the Protostar Realtor, I guess you could call him. I don't know his real name. But, yeah, level 6 is when you'll be able to grab that. Do you just want me to do a quick overview of stuff, and then we can talk about the community impact? Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Wanna... We do that. Um, yeah, so, for those of you who don't know, I'm sure a lot of you guys in chat do. Level 6, when you can get the first house, they've got the plug and socket system in place. Um, plug sockets on the outside of your house. You can uh, free, free drop items, you know, create your own stuff on the inside of the house. There's all sorts of good videos out there for it. They really pushed it during PAX. What we really want to talk about is the community impact on the housing and how having these houses away from towns and things will have effect on, you know, big hubs and stuff like that. So, Blank, you want to go into that first part? Sure. Well, we also had uh, people are going to ask questions about plugs, and we'll answer and speculate with you guys as best as we can. Um, sure. But... The community impact is another one we have here. So there is some micro and macro sociology to talk about. First part depends on how you like your social interactions. Some people are going to say that the towns are going to be these big ghost towns where normally you could go <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> into Iron Forge. There's lots of people hanging out there waiting for arena queues, things like that. They feel that well, if you have houses where everything's there, then why would you go into town? You know, what's the incentive? There's no point. Um, and again, that, that diminishes the community outside of circles and, you know, stopping by to go to the auction house. So before, as always, before I get into it, I need to go cough and clear out this frog and get another drink. So why don't you guys go ahead and start talking about uh, the perceived or real <clears throat> community impact on housing. I can jump in on that. To me, it depends what they include in your house. But the plugs are saying you got to have a crafting station, your raid portal, you'd be able to gather resources, you'd be able to farm. And with that, people can come to your plot and do their stuff with you, and you can invite guests or you can open to the public. But if you put too many items in that plug selection, which means you don't have to go to a trading post or the auction house, you only got to go to towns to get quests occasionally. And that's a bad thing in my eyes because then you won't see that guy in that Uber mount or that amazing armor or to give people the encouragement to step up forward. I think it could have a negative effect if too much happens on a house. No, I think I think at this point we still can't have auction houses at our house. So we'll still have that large gathering on that one building in town. Yeah, but, that's the. But there won't be much anything else in town other than people, you know, playing the auction house and sitting there for hours. Or they'll be at their house gathering and crafting rather than sitting around a crowd. Yeah, 
I think that's the that's probably the big one in my eyes is that will, I mean the rest XP will push people towards their houses and you know the sustainability on the house being able to you know gather and stuff like that but if they which I could see in launch if they allow you to put some sort of auction house on your house oh God, house I'm saying house a lot the that's gonna I think it'll kill main hubs besides the quests and you know it's I just think it's a bad idea to put the auction house on your plot but I think, I think raid portals knows? are a bad idea on your house plot either it's all cool and convenient. I mean, raid portal on it, I can see it being cool. It's just, I mean, do we really need, do we really need these cities to be the hubs that they were, you know, for WoW and Guild Wars and all these MMOs that had these certain cities that I remember in Guild Wars 1, I could go to, by the end of the last expansion, was all you go to Comedon and they ended up, everybody called it uh, Spamadon. Because you go there, and that's just where a trade chat would happen. It's just, I guess we'll see uh, coming down the road here whether or not they could be ghost towns. Now, can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. There's uh, a bunch of different things I'm going to throw out there for you guys. Everybody likes to think of systems within past confines. So we're talking about having a raid portal. Okay. What if we change the system? What if that raid portal doesn't take you into the raid? What if it takes you to outside of the raid? What if it brings you nearby? What if it only brings you to the last boss you killed? Um, it depends how you build it. So the raid portal could be good for the micro community because your whole guild gets together at Nixus's place and he has some, he's got the plug that gives a food buff, you know, and he's worked really hard and he's got the really good one, for example. You know what I mean? Uh, it could be a cool thing. Um, it depends how things get implemented. Because if you take away from the macro society that's being built, you be, you might be able to make smaller ones that are more fun that we've never seen before. Uh, for example, one of the things that I'd written down was, what if we had a an area that part of the story we are trying to get these people to come be on our side because they have some technology we want, but both Exiles and Dominion want it. We raid Portal in, and it's just like the outside of Karazhan or any other place. It's open PvP, and most people all start raiding at the same time. You're creating conflict. What I'm trying to say is that there's more than one way to skin a cat. I don't want to think about, oh, well, we're, the community impact is ghost towns. Okay, that's, a, that's the macro. That's the big picture. What could be gained from trying to do things in a different way? So do you guys have some thoughts about that, about the smaller smaller interactions being worth it, or is it just the ghost town that everyone's worried about? Well, I, I guess you could say, just like you said, with the, the, having the raid portal portals you to just outside, not into the actual thing, so limiting the actual impact of those things, like even saying, here's a portal to the auction house, I don't know, it's... They're, I mean, they're a game company, they're a developer, and I'm sure they've talked about this already, so I'm not too frightened about it. Um, it's just an interesting topic to talk about because, yeah, who's to say that, you know, your plot isn't a town? You know, you let everybody come to yours and you say, hey, this is, you know, Beetle Town. This mm -hmm. is where stuff happens. It'd be interesting. Maybe it's a tie in with well, the like settler the path. Because you got settlers going out building stuff. They may be trying to decentralize that, so people, are, if you want access to your auction house, you need someone to go build one for you. Maybe that's the route they're going. Uh, I like what Zap said, what if those raid, raid portals are only useful once a week? I mean, See, that, that's, that, that would definitely that's another be, limiting... But useful still. Good. I mean, basically, like, you have to go to your raid originally, and then... Yeah, what you said earlier, if it takes you to the boss you left off at, and that's your one use for the week, that would actually be an interesting use for that portal. I just, I, I find it interesting how the opinions are weighed. You know, an empty city, okay, who cares if it's an empty city if you have a close community where everybody hangs out on the big, you know, let's say there's... 10 big guilds on your server and everybody hangs out on these different war plots those people may be closer i said war plots excuse me on those houses of those guild members who leave their you know their houses open for everybody 
you've now created a tighter knit community that hangs out and would have a better positive interaction than a bunch of people hanging out in Ogremar or Iron Forge. So again, that works if you can get everyone in those ten guilds. Well, no, I'm not saying I just in the guilds like the... because you can open your house. So yeah. if you if your if your house is open, like I said, there's just these ten people. You know, it's like oh, Beetle's house isn't open. Beetle's private. He has a stripper pole and doesn't share. You know, but Roshi's got one because he's got a bar, and everybody goes to you know Roshi's house, and someone goes to Eric Units because they've got an open plot. The, uh, it could build smaller hubs of community gatherings. I just I don't want to say that it's a bad idea without fully exploring the possible options and the positive and negative effects. I think what you're saying would work if people are more open about it, if people open up their houses and people realize that's what's going on. If you've got a standard player logs into the game, doesn't belong to a guild, turns up a town, he's just going to see a ghost town. And they represent a large portion of the game players, I would say. You know, that's, that's my concern, is like, as a guild, you know, our guild, yeah, pretty much all our houses are going to be open to our guild mates, and I think, you know, ourselves, our houses are going to be open to everybody being involved in our community in such a large way. But if you don't have that in the server you picked, then you're back to this ghost town issue where, you know, maybe the organized players aren't present and you can't get into a guild because you can't find them. Maybe, hopefully, whilst our carbine of combat at that, with some decent guild system finding guilds, some advertising system. That's a good idea. That's my concern. Yeah. You know, it's a, that, yeah. that player whose first MMO, never played a game before, hasn't, doesn't know about raids, doesn't know about cap, doesn't know that they, the character it doesn't look so great, even though they said level one armor is going to look pretty cool, doesn't know about the, the end armor, which is going to look amazing, because they're not going to see it. A dedicated hardcore well, player is going to go back to their house. I look at it like this. A good community polices itself, encourages itself, and encourages others. So if other, you know, guilds and organizations don't have a Nixus or, you know, a blank or you like just because the town is empty doesn't mean you're not gonna stroll in it, go by because there's gonna be people farming the auction house. There's gonna be reasons to go into the town even if hanging out at the house is where you're at. And when new people are out, they're running around, you're on your ult on their alts, um, you're still going to see them. So it, it'll be up to the community that's tight-knit, that, that's positive to be like, hey man, come check out, this is how you get to this, you know, this is how you get to this house, this is where people hang out, you know, these are the different people here, come check it out. So it is, man, me and you are going to be fighting tonight, Roche, I can see it. You <laughs> <laughs> told me to that. Yeah. Um, that is, <laughs> yeah, as you it. said, there's ways around it, they can have a, a notice board, which is like best houses. You go and visit someone's house plot, you vote for it, that goes up a list, and new players can go and check it out. A bit like the Foundry system you got in Neverwinter has just launched. You can vote for the Foundry missions and say which are the good ones, and they bubble up to the top. Maybe they need to have a housing. It, it, EverQuest 2 did the same. You could vote, this is the best public house. Rift now with a weird portal thing, you can make it look like Star Wars, I believe. Again, you can vote for the good ones. I think... I think uh, uh, I'm gonna butcher your name in chat. Sorry, but Osatis, uh, give incentives to be in town. It's gonna happen. Don't worry about it, guys. There's gonna be incentives to be in the town. Oroshi, I'm not gonna hang out with you in the town anyway. So, get out of here. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm just a guy who does the logistics, and I get, I get told to hang out in the back. I was gonna be on the edge of my floating housing plot, telling people I'm gonna jump, and then <laughs> I'm gonna jump. <laughs> Just be like, set, all, set money or I jump. Mine. <laughs> Give me money. I just said your money to jump. Alright, uh, did you... <laughs> oh, okay. Did we... Hater. <laughs> I, I think how, how, uh, how, how open people leave their houses is really going to depend on the kind of controls we're given over our different plugs as well. Because you're not going to, like, if you leave your house completely open but you can't control, like, who has access to your mine or your... your... But it's har harvesting materials. What they sure. said is, someone comes and does your mine, then you get the resources, and they get a bonus for doing it. Yeah. So. And I wonder it's, it's, if that's tiered, and that's my min max question of the yeah. week. Would be, if my <laughs> guildmate comes to my, you know, blacksmith and does whatever, or, you know, picks flowers, 
do I get more than if somebody random or if some random person comes along do I get more or is it just straight across the board more than likely it'll be straight across the board but I still think that's it's still interesting yeah it hurts my head to think about how they're going to balance that and but I'm sure they've got it under control I mean be skewed you don't anyway just towards a random person say it again if you skew that in any way, I'd say you want to get more of a bonus to the random person coming doing it for you than a guild mate. Yeah, well, I, think, then... I th think they said that if someone comes and mines your stuff, yes, you'll get something for it, but it'll be less of a yield than if you were doing it yourself. Don't quote me so on like, that, but I feel like I've heard that. The, and that's why I think the permissions will be kind of important, because I am a daily logger. But if I'm not going to log on, I would turn my permission so that anyone in the guild did, could do it, or, or anyone you know in my circle, and then just leave it open, just hope somebody comes by and does it when I'm not there, you know. So permissions yeah, will I be mean, kind of important with that, but yeah, yeah. If you give me permission to your house, I'm totally effing up the inside of it. Doesn't nope. Matter. <laughs> nope. I'm gonna just change everything. Not happening, Beetle. Why does he have stripper poles everywhere? Boxes in here. <laughs> yep. <laughs> The entire house is beds. Why are there so many beds? Uh, beds and stripper poles. That's all this house will be. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think we're going to move on from uh, housing here. We're gonna Any housing next questions, be sure to put them in. Yeah. If you have well, housing questions, Nixus is gathering them up, and we'll uh, get to them at the end of the show. Like Beetle just said. I'll just repeat what he said. Next big yeah, topic is that. open world PvP on the PvE theme park. This is going to lead into a conversation about PvP only stats. Nixus is going to drop a link to you guys and we're going to give you a little uh, me and Hiroshi are going to fight back and forth so you'll have to uh, excuse us but one of the questions I was asked to Bardic over at Carbine was how do you cope with balancing particular abilities within PvE and PvP? <clears throat> Some of the things that they discussed was that PvP stats are going to help mitigate. They also have breakout gameplay aspects, and hard CCs are not something that you are stuck with. Now, to me, as a hardcore PvPer, I have little issues with this, both sides of the fence. You can actually break free earlier if you want to, which can help mitigate some of that in the PvE versus PvP. However, you know, a PvE monster won't be able to do anything about a particular stun. But in PvP, you'll be able to do something to take action to reduce the duration of your hard CC. As far as burst damage goes, these are things that she said uh, they're going to fine-tune on individual class levels. And that's why they're working on arena testing as early as possible. So cl uh, the class team can make good decisions based on what we see in both environments for PvP and in dungeon content. So, launching into the first part, open world PvP, Roche, why don't you tell me, uh, why don't you tell me what you think, buddy? See, to me, I love PvP. I love playing planet side, getting out there, killing people. But what I don't like is I'm in a PvE game, a theme park, traditional theme park MMO, where you're out ganking, killing monsters yourself, you're out questing, and you get jumped by someone 10 levels above you. Um, because they decided to pick on you while you're trying to kill that dragon, and the drag there's no consequences for them doing that. The dragon ignores them, so you've been being hit on by the dragon and them, and you just die. To me, that's not gameplay. It's called ganking, and I'm really against that. If you want PvP, you should have a world v world area, guild v guild, get out there and go and fight. You know, going around killing low level players when you're high level and they're already, you know, a disadvantage to you. And then if you're going to have like PvP stats, so you're doing more damage to them because you're geared to kill that player, and they try and strike back, it doesn't to me make it a balanced game. Play play can I or play our violins. <laughs> I, 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 I was gonna so... say I'm like I'm sorry, Hiroshi, because that's me ganking you. Yeah. When, I, when I get bored, the first thing I type in or go into Teamspeak is like. Anybody want to go gank for a little while? I'm bored. So I'm just like, I remember AJ Conan sitting in a bush for 20 minutes, like, surfing the web. And then, like, someone being like, like, Rise, I was playing it with one of our guildies. He's just like, oh, here comes one. Here comes one. I, like, alt-tab back in. I'm like, oh, yep. 
we got him. We can go hit him twice and kill him and run back in the bush. I was just like, ah, it's fun. Wait, there's so many different little sections, but let's gank him, first of all. And I want to see you guys say it in chat, because somebody mentioned the adrenaline rush about getting away. Open world PvP. We're talking, we're going to structure this a little bit. In the world, as you're playing, you're talking about being ganked while doing something else, someone else is higher level than you. That is part of being on an MMO on a PvP server. That is why you have bigger, better friends in him, or you have a main that can come back. Uh, there are consequences and rewards for everything we do. So if, you know, Fate decides she's going to come pick on Nixus, you know, because he takes 10 years to level, and he's level 10, and Fate's like, I'm going to come beat on Nixus because I know I can. She knows that part of that consequence is then blank, Beetle, and a bunch of us are all going to come strolling around and put down a nice little campfire thanks to, you know, our settler. We're just going to enjoy hanging out. That's the consequence. Um, ganking isn't fun because it slows down your gameplay, uh, all of those other negative things that you'll hear. But honestly, the first part is that's part of being in PvP. Whether it's slowing down someone else, you, whether it's just... You're playing a PvE game, and then well, they take some PvP and slap it on top. And then you get this unbalance of the game. It is MMOs in a theme park capacity are PvE games. And then they go like, oh, we got to fit some PvP in here, slap on a band-aid, call it PvP, and it just ends up people ganking. It's not like, so you, or you, your answer is, oh, Nexus got ganked by fate, so we're going to go and gank fate. So no PvP happened, ganking happened. It's just ganking, no PvP. <laughs> it's, it's true. It, well, hang on, we'll start, uh, chat room, we'll start taking applications for Oroshi's bodyguard. I'm gonna have one on all times while he's leveling. It will pay well, but you will have yep. to watch his back at all times because I don't want him raging. So taking applications I, I, for I Oroshi's rage. bodyguard. Um, in terror, I play in the PvP open world server, and people jump me. I've been jumped by higher levels, and people jump me at the same level, and I've ganged them back. You know, I fought them off. Right. But to me, it's when you have a PvE game and then slap on the PvP on top without you know, taking into considerations how that's going to affect the gameplay. If you jump me and I'm fighting mobs and the mobs see a new threat, that sort of stuff should happen. You should expand upon it. You know, so you're taking a risk when you're jumping on a, a player. At the moment, you're not. You, you're 10 levels above. They're already involved in a monster. And you're just taking candy from a kid and calling it PvP. It's not. What about, what about putting in a, a criminal system or... Bounty Even system. A, bounty system. A, a, yeah. a bounty system. I don't say bounty system because bounty system isn't fix, fixing anything when if you get ganked, like the old game, I don't know, maybe they played it Arc Lord or Arch Lord, whatever you want to call it. You get ganked, and then it's like, would you like to place a bounty on this guy? Well, no, dude, I'm level three, and I got like 40 copper in my name, and, and no one's going to go after the guy for 20 copper. So the reason I don't say a bounty system is because I ain't got time for that. One, and two, if someone ganks you, let's say Oroshi, someone ganks you within a five level spread, it's a minor minor strike, whatever, that's PvP. But if someone comes down and ganks you at a 10 level spread or 15 level spread, some sort of criminal system that, you know, there might be one guard when you're, he's in a town that'll walk up to him and start attacking him or something like that, because I think bounty systems fail. And well, systems fell for another reason as well, because the guy in even line, they have a bounty system. You slap on a bounty, it gets bigger and bigger, and the guy goes, mate, why didn't you kill me? Yeah. <laughs> and then they cash in on 10, the side of me? Yeah, 10, 50, a billion, whatever it is, bounty, and they cash in on it. You oh, know, you need good. some sort of consequences for ganking players. It needs to be part of the game, not, say, like, Rift, where it was just slapped on. It was just, this is now a open world PvP server. And that was it. They didn't add any more mechanics into the game beyond allowing you to attack another player. And I think that creates the imbalance, and it creates frustration in other players trying to play in that game. You know, some people have some fun ganking, and the majority just get annoyed, pissed off, and go and play another game. Well, let's talk about at me, as always, systems. In Terra, as you mentioned, you are able to then change your channel 
which is how they get around ganking. You don't want to get ganked, what do they say? Don't be in channel one. So it is possible to have a workaround uh, without, I mean, I'll talk about boundaries in a second, but it is possible that it could be like, hey, uh, I don't want to be in channel one, I'm about to roll outside here, and I'm on my alt, and it's three o'clock in the morning and no one else is around, probably want to sidestep that. I think bounties can be cool, but I've yet to see a system that I can fully back. I love the idea of uh, player done ones where it's like, hey, you you know take a screenshot of you kicking this guy's butt in the open world, and I'll mail you you know ten gold. Those I've always found to be much more interesting, causes quite a lot of conflict and drama on the forums because people really get into it. Um, starts some interesting guild wars as I've seen in the past, but bounty systems always seem to fail because of either, hey, why don't you kill me? I'm worth a lot, or the systems don't really fully work uh, unless you do something. I can't remember what game that was, but you could put a bounty. If they killed you, they were over five or ten levels above you. You could have the guards go after them or let people kill them for a price for so long, for like 24 hours or something like that, but then people logged off, so then they just made it until it went away. But overall, bounty systems just don't seem to work in MMOs. I mean, you guys have to correct me if I'm wrong, but... I have not seen one... You know, and I'm not saying take the PvP out, I'm saying make it more of the game. Add more depth into it. You know, because if you get ganked, you get ganked. You know, as you said, it's part of the game. But they need to make it so the gankers have to be really thinking, is this worthwhile? You know, is this... There needs to be some risk to it. There needs to be some fun element for both sides to it. You know, I'm not saying take PvP out. I'm saying put more PvP in. You know, so if someone comes and jumps on you, you're doing something, there's, the circumstances change, and maybe... They've been off more than they can chew. Yeah, they're 10 levels above you, but something happens, and maybe that time doesn't work out. And that's a mechanic within the game, and it's added into Or as you said, you know, they get flagged as a criminal. It, it needs to be worthwhile reason for ganking that player, attacking that player. You've got to think in your brain the strategy behind it. Make it more involved. I think... Uh, well, what kind of penalty uh, would you really Zapsen. enforce on someone who, you know, is a criminal? Especially in a game like Wildstar, where it was like at this point going to town is not really going to be a major point to uh, yep. these people. Yeah. In Wildstar, isn't Exiles versus instead. Dominion? You have a reason for the fight, and if you're going to have open PvP areas, then that needs to be more involved in what's going on in that situation. Okay, let's let's. I want to talk about that because that's important. I've had this conversation on the forums, and also briefly with some other hardcore PvPers outside of our established guild. Um, if you guys are WoW players, you will remember in the Burning Crusade expansion, one of the highly contested places that encouraged open world PvP, which I don't believe was designed that way, was going to farm for fire modes. And I can't I think that might have been the grand I strongly support open world PvP that is based around those sort of things because it's up to the players to create conflict, resolve conflict at max level because you couldn't get there unless you could fly. And it was a ton of fun. And you were getting a resource that people severe, like they really, really needed to upgrade. I think at the time it was, it was a big deal when Serpentine Cavern was around. It may have been before. But your problem then, Hiroshi, then becomes not ganking, but PvP only stats. Am I correct? Uh, yeah, that, that's like a different argument. Sometimes I fail that PvP only stats, depending on how the game handles them. Have we not seen how Wildstar will do? They said to put them in. I hope they're going to include them as a from level one up. A lot of games is just like you're now level sixty cap. You now have to have a PvP stats. And when you go into an arena, you back to a system where, hey, I'm, you know, a noob character again. You know, so you're having to, you, you try and attack someone, they've got 90% damage resistance to you, so you've got to hit them forever before they die. They've got like a 100% damage boost, and they, they one-shot you or two-shot you. You know, you just back down to this, 
boring game of grinding up, losing match after match after match until, you know, you've served your time. That's the correct way to say it almost, before you're really allowed to play in the PvP game. I've always been against, been against PvP, PvP stats myself. At least you're, if you're going to do PvP, base those stats off of your own stats. Why add another stat? Why add another stat? Me, I think it's to... Never mind, Blank, go ahead. I'm sure you're already fuming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not so much fuming. I I agree to a certain extent. When and I like, to, and I'm sorry that I use. I, I hate using an old system, but I'm using it to try and make an example of uh, good things to take from it, bad things to leave. When arenas first came out for World of Warcraft, they had certain stats that you got resilience. Reduced things, damage you took. They also had more stamina. You got the better ones by getting a higher rating. So if the ELO system, if the matchmaking system is done correctly, when it first comes out, please hear me on this, when it first comes out, things should balance out. The biggest problem is this. Two or three expansions down the road, when you have people that are experienced in playing in arenas that are ahead of the gear curves, they will always dominate. Because when a new season comes out, those stats, somebody who has full, um, let's say over 2,000 rated PvP gear, 2,200 rated PvP gear, is going to have a much bigger advantage than you and your buddies who decided to come try it out because you've never been in this game before. How to combat that? I have no idea. And I'm not a big one for some sort of wipe because that would be silly. When it first comes out, if matchmaking and the system that they use to put people together, it shouldn't be a big problem. Yes, um, everyone you might, might rush to get to that level and start doing arenas and facing people and gearing up. But once you get to that point where it's a couple months in, people have about the same sort of gear, if matchmaking does its job, it shouldn't be a big deal. I do, I will give you the argument of going into open world, you're going to get your butt kicked. But what I will say about that is, let's say this dude, you're talking about a guy doing PvE. He's out doing PvE for whatever reason. I would hope that the way that the systems are balanced is if he's doing PvE, I'm going to make a big assumption and say maybe he does raids. So hopefully his gear does more damage for his skill for whatever it does so even though we the other guy that he's facing has pvp rated gear the other guy may be able to do more damage or have a harder cooldown or things that normally equate in pve so that when they face each other it almost balances out does that make sense yeah if you got a system which were too balanced then i can understand it but you know you sort of using a new stat system to balance pve skills and pvp and then you, you have like a whole gear tiered system. So, you know, sometimes I've seen it that a bad player who's just sat and grounded your AFK at the back of the arena has really good gear. They just AFK on so they go high up. Because they, why not? Because you're going to lose anyway. And then a new player's good skill can't win. You know, I think you they really need to look at the balance and how much it's going to affect stuff. You need, you can have a PvP stat. I think it needs to start at the very beginning of the game. It needs to be maybe you have a PvP stat on every item. You know, so it's already there, you know, sort of thing. So as you're doing standard stuff, maybe build it up. No, I'm sure I'm, I'm the, if you have them separate, but they're balanced. If I'm testing, I'm okay. Boom. I'm level 50 in Wildstar and I take my guy that is all in the best PvE gear that that comes out for that content. And I also have this guy that has the best PvP gear for the content. And if, let's say, they're both similarly skilled when they fight, they should both die at the same time. That is, if you yep. balance the systems the way it should work, even if this guy has PvP-like stats, the PvE stat that makes you bleed longer, makes you bleed, makes the boss bleed, whatever it is, should balance out. Again, I'm not a game designer, but that's how you would think optimally it works without dealing with stat inflation or neutralizing everybody and all that sort of stuff. 
the thing is, um, when you're doing PvP, the reductions that you normally get are based on damages, or based on percentages, so that's not always going to be the case. They're two different things, though. PvP is made for fighting against other players. PvP is, is made for fighting against monsters that have specific mechanics. You're practicing your cooldowns and your skills based upon limited, I mean, Wildstar's trying to make it very dynamic, but a limited set of things are going to do. With a player, they can change their mind at any time. I'm for having PvP stats because they get them from doing that set skill. Uh, not skill, but that, that system of PvP, whether it's a war plot or arena. Is it fair that they get a damage reduction and you have to pound on them harder in open world? <clears throat> Maybe not, <clears throat> but that's what they get for doing that. Having that gear is because that's what they want to do. You don't want to get your butt kicked while you're out picking flowers, maybe you should go do some battlegrounds with some friends. I'm, you know, I'm just saying. So maybe with the, the system they're using for crafting where you can slot items in, they could always create a PvP slot so you can do more of a hybrid build. You know, maybe they should give people that option. I think Zap said that's confirmed. No. You can yeah, slot what for is? PvP. There's, there a, there's ARC slot for PvP. Because when I, when I played EVE, there's nothing more enjoyed. <laughs> Going belt ratting in a PvP ship, in a fine balance between the two, so when you do get jumped, you can, you know, warp scramble and web that target trying to kill you, which is what they're relying on not being able to do, and fight them off and kill them. You know, it's just having a nice balance so you can enjoy the game. You know, you can think, I'm going to go do this, or you, ha you have that choice. You can either PvE efficiently and kill as many mobs per hour and get your XP right up, or you can ensure that if someone does jump you or does gank you, you have an option of defense. So you can either get some damage reduction on and some, you know, EVP boosting stats as well. It adds more fun into the mix, more strategy. You decide which route you're going to go on to. That's how I'd like to see it. You explain that with a lot of Eve words, and I'm sure you lost a lot of people in chat as they're <laughs> giving done. question marks, web <laughs> scrambling. <laughs> And I was going to say, what, your ship had more than one weapon slot? All I flew was an Iteron Mark V, <laughs> mined all day. It's, but yeah. that's that's Eve. He he did stuff to PvP people while he was PvP. Basically being prepared, it's you set up to go and you kill stuff, you set up to go kill your dragon, but you also got in the back of your mind, I have these stuns which work against players to hold them down and kill them, you know, and I could do it quicker than the dragon's going to kill me. You know, you just got to have that in the back of your head, you know, and I think that's something they could include. If you're going to stick EVP into the open world, you need that hybrid situation where you can go down the line and stand a chance of killing the monsters as well as fending off and killing players who attack you. So you can respond what? to what's going on in the situation. No, it, it, for me, it comes down to this. Whatever your gear is, people are going to gank you. Yeah. So either... It's nice to try and balance things. People with PvP gear are going to kick your butt. That's just where it's at. I mean, that's they have more um, stamina. They have more health. They have the PvP stats. So you better be good at turning around, CCing them, getting on your flying rocket ship, and getting the hell out of there. That's just uh, that's just the way I look at it. You have the breakout gameplay, so you can stun them. You, you you hopefully, back you know enough systems. And on the house, you're saying maybe you should be looking at it a different way. You're back to, like, yes. this is how it's always been. Am I really? Yeah. I just, that's, like... That's why I'm taking a step back as you guys do this. I'm, <laughs> I'm just fighting my way. Just, I can't... This is a, it's, a, it's a system that I can't, you know, say definitively what I feel about it until I play the game. It's one of my things where I'm just, like... I really don't know what I'm talking about right now. I mean, I can read all I want on PvP stats, but who knows? I might get in the game and be like, PvP stats are the best thing in the world. Or I could say they're the worst. I just, it's just me taking a step back and just waiting. You know, I can't say anything about it. All I know is that when it comes to the stat breakdown of having stats for PvP versus PvE having others, Hopefully they equalize based upon 
whoever has, you know, the, the max or the min or max. So the guy that has, you know, the five out of five raid gear and the other guy that's, you know, suited up for PVP, hopefully it comes down in a fight to who has the better skill. But in the end, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm for having PVP only stats because they're, when you're fighting other people, so there should be a, a distinct difference between there's certain things you want in your class package to do in PVE. You know, you want that extra, you know, you want that set bonus to have extra damage or a speed boost or whatever. And in PVP, you're going to want other things, which is normally the ability to last a little longer. So that's what I got to say. Doesn't everybody want to last a little longer? I had to say, sorry. <laughs> I guess we need to see how they're going to implement both systems and where they're going to go. I understand there was no confirmed open world PvP anywhere in the game. They're still thinking about yeah, it. Not at launch. Yeah, not at launch. Possible, and that's why I mentioned the the farm, the objectives that just happened to be there naturally. They said that that they liked that idea, but they're nothing confirmed. So um, I like that idea too. You know, it's you know it's a reason to go and fight, and that's what I'm all about. All right. Looks like we're trucking along. We're, we good with that topic for now. Got to see where things come out. They could be good. They could be bad. Let's hope they're balanced. Yep. Um, moving along. It's going to mention or stuff that we may talk about here in the future. Some people had thrown towards me was to talk about what we thought about dailies. Probably going to happen our next episode. Um, what do we think about the subscription model? And um, if you guys are listening, everybody here wants spectator mode for uh, PvP. So, Carbine, if you're watching, we know you are because there's ninjas in our house. Spectator mode, put it in. Yeah, my, Definitely. my ninja eats all the chips. I'm losing weight, and that's a problem. Cause <laughs> all, I'm all, all my sake has gone after every show. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah. Ah, that's crazy. <laughs> They did say spectator mode won't be in launch. I think they didn't. Bardic say it's something she really wants, but it they yep. don't think they'll have it at launch. So yeah, it's something I'd like to see as well because it, it creates some interesting you know dynamics. Want to be able to watch people's yeah, matches do, like, and to events that set up way. stream um, stream tournaments. Yeah. Um, before we get to the reveal, we're gonna scroll on down here to the uh, questions. questions. Yeah, we'll go to questions for the reveal. I can rocket fire these if you want me to. If anybody wants yeah, to touch on them. Yeah, let's do that. Go. Right. Question one. All right, so before we do our little reveal that we have in store, let's go through the questions we found in chat today. Um, let's see. What would SVG like to see revealed first? Races, classes, paths, or crafting? Classes. Uh, for me, more classes. My personal answer is classes. Classes for me, definitely. So, classes. classes? Classes. Bam. Done. How much farming is involved in actually getting the plugs that you want? Um, Depends. I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure they're going to scale them based on, you know, the plug being, you know, raid portals probably be a ton of farming. But they also said that they're in the world there's going to be, you know, for a raid portal you may need you know, portal runestone, and only portal runestone may go drop off a certain mob somewhere, so there's going to be specific things in the world that are going to be needed for It'd some of those right. things to craft. Yeah, stuff. Um, is it possible to convert your house into a guild hall? I don't believe this time, no. I think they're treating war plots more along the lines of a, a war party hall, a guild hall war party thing. Um, if anybody wants to correct me, they can. There's a limited number one. of sockets on your plot for potential plugs. Do you think that Carbine will limit how many active sockets you start with and have a system to unlock more sockets over time? Yep. I, th I think they will, but at, l at the start, you I think you'll have a certain amount of sockets. Plus, you probably don't want to use all the sockets up, but think about it. Your house is a plot, so unless you can buy more land you're eventually going to hit the edges of your plot no matter what. Doesn't it sound like um, you could buy your first house at level 6? 
yeah. it's like you could buy your house level six. If it's your first house, then maybe you could buy yeah. bigger houses as time goes on. If it's well, you, you your can. house, then that's yeah, that's a good point. You start with like a campfire. Uh, it, you, you start with yeah. like a a house that you have to go and clear out, and they've already said that they've already like like you yeah. buy the you house, gotta clear the you got to go and clear it out and all this crap. You got to do like quests for it to be your house. And then it sounds like there's going to be upgrades. Yeah. So well, the very that first one may thing not they have showed, anything like, on it except the house that you can sleep in. Yeah. Well, the very first thing they show was like a, camp, a campsite is basically your first thing. Well, the, the camp the campsite's right. different than the housing. No, no, your, the, your original housing is like a camp. Your very first housing is a campsite, basically. Until you actually can the afford to build The level six one, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. They show, when they show, when they were showing the plot, the very first thing they showed was a, a, a campsite, and then the guy built up from there in the video. Oh, in the middle of the plot? Yeah. yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. Start with the tent. Um, All right. What if, what if the housing plot raid portal is only usable once a week? This is in regards to the balancing of the towns versus plots. Um, yeah, we so we else. talked so about touch it. On that? Well, we we talked yeah. about we it talked when about it came out. Was yeah. that uh, it would be a cool balancing idea if the the housing plot that lets you into your raid uh, had specific you know boundaries to it. So it's definitely a good idea. Okay. Um, Karbaka asks, not related to housing, but I was wondering if anybody had heard of dies will be done like in Guild Wars 2, where you buy it once. And it'll be, or will it be per use? We know the dying system is in game, but we don't know the specifics of that. Um, from this is a full we system last week. Out. What's up? Last week we were just saying it was like a fully implemented die system was there, but they said there's no. But they didn't say how it's gonna work, or whether you have to buy dies or anything yet. They just said that the die system is in the game. Yeah, we just know it's there, and there's a lot of. He said there is every color in the <laughs> world, or whatever it was. <laughs> Um, I don't, I don't think it'd be. I don't think it'll be nearly as hard to get your dies either, especially the, the Guard Law. How yeah. much is it? They're responsible, and how much is it up to the community? I think we're talking about um, ghost towns and houses, and how much of it's down yep. to devs to okay. oh. encourage people to use the towns over the community. At the end of the day, the devs give us the tools to play the game. It's, you know, it's a combination. It's up to us as players. If the devs can give us the tools to encourage us to, you know, go to a town, then we'll use the towns. Yeah. And, I mean, people, I mean, the community, like you said, server communities, we may have a server community, whatever server we roll on, it's like, hey, everybody who wants to just hang out on whatever nights, if you're not feeling like raiding, you know, we'll be meeting in such and such city, and then it just becomes a hub. I mean, the community can do a lot to help that out for sure. Um, if you invite everyone, can anyone come in and mess up your stuff on your housing plot? I'm sure there'll be different types of permissions. Uh, one would probably be, you know, entering the main house, um, you know, entering the plot itself. There'll probably be a big checklist. To probably be a big checklist of permissions of what like you can that. give people to do who come. Yeah. I'm just not like Facebook's um, privacy settings, just reset themselves and change themselves every couple of days. It'd be fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Zap's wondering, I think it's about the ganking. What if you have a job board and you can offer a given percentage split for people coming to help? Talking about the houses. Okay. If you had like a. It's a good idea. I, I like the idea of like, yeah. hey, I'm going to be gone. Guildies could come and get a certain percentage, or any any random person could come by and get a certain percentage. It's a cool idea. I've never 80, heard of it 80% before. 80% of the drops, stuff like that. That could be, I mean, that could be implemented pretty easily. You just use it as a quest, and you just give the player can just a finite gain thing. XP. Maybe X, maybe, maybe a little bit of XP. Maybe you level that way to cap. Just go around caretaking people's houses. Yeah. Wow, how awesome would that be if just someone was like, here, you know? Boom! <laughs> um, what about Wildstar Lore? What about your housing coming under attack? I uh, don't believe people can attack attack your houses. Um, that's what Warplots um, are for. Mobs can though. Mobs can raid you your have, house, yeah, and I then guess. you can. Yeah, NPCs can like raid your plot, but there definitely won't be combat. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Vuxy asks, I saw a Reddit post about wishing to have pictures that you put in your house of in-game screenshots. What do you guys think about that? Uh, it's cool. Um, they'd have to have, you know, it'd have to be a feature system. It wouldn't have to be half-assed. They'd, you know, you could, when placing a, a picture frame on the window, maybe, with the rotate and move options, there could be upload from the game screenshot folder. That could work pretty simply, I think. Um, I think it's a cool idea. Uh, TTP. You'd be doing it from a... It's your time to penis. If you have a screenshot folder on your computer, then you can just yeah. dump anything in it once you know what the format is. You know, and someone, they can come out with this weird priority system, but this is the internet, it'd be a hack in like two hours, and then people would be able to dump whatever picture they want on there, so you could have like your own nude gallery in your house. I think mean, you'd have to have some cloud source version of it. You take a screenshot, it went to, to the Roche's cloud. House. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can see my house here, you know. Lovely penis on yeah, the wall over there. Jesus, yeah. No, that we're all he, set. He all calls set. it art. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> this one's called the hammer. <laughs> yeah. It's was it an in-game term or is it one CCP uses that um, you know, it's why player made content always turns out to be a bad idea because no matter how well a constraint you do, someone always comes up with a penis. You know. Well, yeah, it's like oh. uh, yeah. it's like when Spore launched. And you're like, oh sweet, my my whatever can we can fly to different planets and see other players' stuff. First planet you land on is just a bunch of walking penises. You're just like, well, thanks, bro. This is I don't want to be friends with your race. <laughs> you guys look weird. <laughs> all penises all over the place. Um, all right, enough penis talk. Next question. <laughs> yep. Sorry. <laughs> penis. Hmm. I actually have a PvP-related question. Loot. Any idea if Wildstar is going to have players become loot pinatas as well, or will they end up purely being XP as a reward? I, in the open world ganking scene, I don't think there'll be loot pinatas, and in battlegrounds, that's usually just for XP. But there might be a loot system at the end of a battleground that you roll for. Yep, that'd be cool. <laughs> Nothing Excuse more me. about that. Um, I. When we saw the circuit board ability to adjust gear, we'll be able to shift gear quickly between PvP and PvE on circuit swaps. It, I don't think it'll be... I know what you're talking about, and shifting gear quickly, I mean, when you place things in the circuit, it destroys the other ones. So if you have, like, a bunch of PvP ones and you can just go back and forth, keep destroying your sockets... It would probably be a smarter idea just to have a whole other set of armor that's socketed that way. Agree. Agree? Well, I'm Agree. more grinding, um, more fun. How about Good. adding a debuff for killing a player that is 10 plus levels lower than you? Yeah, debuffs are cool. I mean, it's that's a huge topic, that ganking stuff. And I mean, Orochi's going to die either way, so... It, it really depends on what <laughs> Carvine wants to I'm do. I'm sure I'd be out of ganking. You know, I do PvP. I used to PvE once. I'm yeah. a reformed Care Bear. Um, Fate is wondering, what are all your mains going to be? Race, class, and path. Um, Myself, depending on the races and classes revealed, I plan on going Makari Stalker... Settler at this point. Roach? Um, maybe scientist. Uh, maybe the fourth race because of the rumors being circled around the internet. They look cute and small and science like. And, uh, half to class. I'm not sure. I'm interested in the last three classes. They're, so far, nothing's yeah, sort of jumped too. out at me yet. Uh, well, of the revealed stuff right now, I'm looking at a Cassian uh, Spellslinger Explorer right now. I am... I've already said mine like a million times of what I potentially like. <clears throat> Seems like I'm going to have to wait, but it's looking like a Cassian Stalker Soldier. So... Alright, um, those next two things aren't questions, Nixus. Darn it. Um, if you don't, uh, from Genetic, if you didn't have specific PvP stats, 
resilience in parentheses, wouldn't raiders just dominate PvP due to having the best gear? Dedicated PvP leaders would be at a disadvantage. It's basically what we talked Blank. about, where I was like, if, you know, this guy's in, you know, if you're talking about scalability, this guy's in the best PvE gear that gives specific things, and this guy's in the best PvP gear, it should, if they have the same amount of skill, when they fight each other, they should die at the same time. However, it doesn't always work like that, and that's why PvP stats are in there to help mitigate that. Let's just hope it doesn't become one of those games where it's like, oh, you go into PvP, but because the balance is so messed up, you're wearing, you know, PvE weapons because the PvP weapons don't scale enough. I just, when it comes into a min-maxing, systems aren't balanced thing, it gets really frustrating for me. I'm sure for a lot of people, so let's hope that that that's, that they balance it out well, because otherwise it, it turns into a, oh no, this is the only way to do it right now because everything's not balanced, and this is the this is the only way to get these results. It's frustrating. So, yep. Next question. Um, <clears throat> I will blank get to level 50 with Beetle ganking him all the time from Honores. That's a good point, uh, uh, especially the, if you can attack the, friendlies and just keep challenging him to a duel, a la borderlands when people used to do that but uh see, see. <laughs> i won't hit blank i'll probably be uh too busy uh hunting for Ara wolf somewhere for uh singing his little exile songs i dude i was gonna say <laughs> yeah. that's uh, just uh, hanging out on my stream playing the song doing a little of this doing some of those you know sit down stand-ups um more than likely so um yeah Plus, uh, I'm pretty sure uh, Beetle will be going to sleep, so he's not going to catch me to level 50. Just throwing it out there. That's Next uh, question? not confirmed. That's not confirmed. That's, Anyone, that's uh, confirmed. <laughs> confirmed Anyone remember right here. when there wasn't PvP gear? It was just fight as you are, go have fun? Yes. Next question. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I have, a, I have a question. How do you think the healer and tank system will work with classes like the Stalker and the Spell Slinger? I just can't picture the Spell Slinger shooting me in the back to heal me up. Um, I've played games in the past where heals were shooting and stuff like that. I mean, if anybody played a Bounty Hunter healer in SWOTOR, I mean, it was targeted and stuff like that, and it wasn't as many telegraphs because they did have some healing missiles and stuff like that, but... It works. Um, if anybody played the game Global Agenda back in the day, there was uh, projectile-based healing there as well, and some AOEs, so it's definitely different, but there are people, you may, you may think it's something weird, but there are people out there that may like that healing system better. So, I mean, as long as I'm staying alive and he's shooting healing bullets into me, I'm not mad, so. Well... Isn't it possible, too, that they may be able to target the ground and be able to do it that way? Because I was pretty sure there was conversations about heals being on the ground, and the closer you are to the center of it, the better heals that you got, things like that. So it may not be just pew, pew, pew forward, but it may be like, I just shot this, I put this healing field down. So Planet Side yeah. 2, you know, it, it's ranged targeted healing. You know, there's plenty of games out there which have, you know, ranged healing. We have to target it. Depends how I they know. put them together. Next yeah. question. Um, Beetle, chop, chop. Well, I'm letting you guys talk. Where did the term tune come from, and how many of you hosts for Late Night Dominion use the term tune as opposed to character? Tune uh, is actually kind of before my time into MMOs. And I think, um, you can wiki this, but I want to say it originated around Ultima Online, but it's either Ultima or EQ. I was and using, I was using an EQ, I, you know that. Yeah, it was used in EQ, but I, I feel like it started in Ultimate Online. Someone's saying MUDs. I mean, yeah, yeah MUDs would definitely be yeah, way yeah, back be behind. Way back, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to anybody who can tell me what MUD actually means without wikiing it. Go. multi user And... Video. God, I know that. I'm doing a question. All right, never mind. Um, what's a good way to get more forum traffic? This is from uh, Wildstar Hub. What's a good way to get more forum traffic posts, build more of a community on my Wildstar fan site without...
doing any stealing from other established fan sites and communities. Um, I got one this. of the best things. Oh, you want to go ahead? All I'm going to say, because I'm sure everyone else has their own opinion, is don't worry about stealing anybody. The community that's out there is fantastic. So have good content, have great attentions, be reputable. And pe I said a real word. I think I just made that up. Anyways, and people will go. Uh, everyone knows that if you're looking for any of us here, you just go to Wildstar Central. That's where we hang out and in the chat and on Twitter. Uh, we also have other places that we slink around to check things out, like Wildscrape or you know Wildstar fans. There's a huge community of awesome people out there. Don't don't worry about stealing from anybody. Just get to know people. That's my suggestion. Go ahead, Beetle. What'd you have to say? Too soft. I was gonna say I just added that site to my uh, bookmarks anyway. But it's if you can be on. I think the one thing that we like to communicate between all of our community sites right now is a lot of us just kind of shoot the shit on Twitter, and you know I'll get a tweet from you know, Settler in Exile or something, you know, just everybody's kind of tweeting back and forth, and that can drum up much more. Um, I mean, we like to give shout-outs on here. If you pop us an email with some new, you know, look you got to your site or something, and we also will be doing shout-outs for Child's Play if sites are donating, but it's it's really about just being seen a lot and having good content, like Blank said. I mean, yeah, get get on the Twitters. Let's see. Question from Genetic. I just jumped genetic. back to Toon. Oh, sorry. Before we go any further, I yeah. just looked it up. Toon was a role-playing game from 1984 where you play cartoon characters. And then from there, it became a pen and paper term, but a Toon was a, a character you created just to play, where a character was something you invested some time and history and background into. There was a difference back from pen and paper. It's not a MMO term. Ah. Oh, there we go. This is knowledge bomb. All right. Would you guys want to what see a League of Legends? Uh, we're getting some feedback. Who here. is that? Second. Would you hey, guys want to see? Not me. I'm still getting. Ow. Let's see. All right, no, I'm hearing it. I just muted. All right. Would you guys <laughs> like to see? A League of Legends style tribunal system to get the community involved in toxic dealing with toxic players? No. 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 Sorry, <laughs> the noise is driving me nuts. Um Roshi, mute yourself, see if it's you. Um, check, check. I'm still hearing it. <laughs> it hurts my ears. <laughs> Stop. Can you hear me? Um Yeah, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Where am I? Yeah. Help! <laughs> League of Legends, help. Tribunal System, nah, the answer is no. Nobody would like to see something like that. Hopefully we have an awesome enough community that we can deal with toxic players ourselves. Oh my goodness, that noise is driving me insane. I'm gonna go nuts. Can yep. we start a call because it seemed to fix it before? Yep, okay. Um, hold quick? on a second. We're gonna do it real quick. Quick, I gotta go slap a ninja. We're missing one. Are we okay? No, we're missing one. You shut Are we still alive? Yeah, we're still alive. Are we still alive? We're still alive, Aegon? We're still alive. Alright, cool. Alright, back to the questions. I don't think the ninja's making any more noise. I kicked him. A lot. We're just all in the um, wrong place now. <laughs> we're all in the wrong places. Blank's become small and, you know. Yes! I've become beetle. That, that was the whole plan. That was the whole plan. Alright. Nixus is just like, yeah! No talking. Alright. Shut your mouth, Nixus! Uh, Check out, um, yeah, oh, shout out to, uh, Carbaca for that image in chat, that was really cool. Um, do you, do, 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 
I don't know what that means. I'm going to skip it because I'm scared. Joey Lampatina, how much will this action con combat system line up with Terra, the best action combat system out there? Um, you guys who recently played it at PAX East, what do you think? They didn't feel like Terra to me at all. It, feel, it feels better, and I like where they're, they're going with it. I'm, from what we played, it was the telegraphs are what really made it. Honestly, in Terra, you get locked on and you're screwed. With this, it's like there's something to tell you that you know you need to move out of the way. You got to dash, got to dodge. It was like that next level up. I thought it was really cool. Instead of being like, oh, you're locked on, you better dodge or you're gonna get blown to bits in three seconds. So, think Terra, think Wildstar. All right. Um, Honoros is wondering which. Which person in SVG will be level 50 first? Um, Blank's going to point at himself, but we have some pretty hardcore guys that, you know, aren't on the show, and they're just, they do work. But I'm sure who's ever in Blank's group, I'm sure Nixus will be in that group. And uh, shout out to a couple other guys from SVG. Whatever group that is, they will be going hard. I have a job. Aegon's got a job. <laughs> Roshi's, gotta... uh, Roshi sells drugs. Um, yeah, I, uh, it's, I my little... it's it's a good question, but the the important part is this: it's not uh, they'll be the cool who got there first, but the way that we work as a guild is more than likely whoever ends up being closer is going to get pushed there. Hopefully, to nail as close to a higher ranking for hitting max level first. So if it just happens to be that Nixus games, you know, twenty hours a day four-hour sleep schedule like me and he somehow gets ahead we'll end up pushing him whatever that means you know getting I him think... there and then everyone else will then turn around and get everyone to that that's that's just the way we work so yeah it'll be cool to hit 50 first we work together to get there more than likely there's 10 or 15 of us that it could be because we've got some real hardcore people around here it's no joke I think I'd just give a quick shout out to Krogan, one of our guys. I'm pretty sure he will be first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love you, Krogan. I mean, it'll. I don't. I don't. I won't be 50 like real fast, but I plan on probably within the first week is a good goal with uh, working nine to five and depending on my schedule. But yeah, I don't. At, not at least first not with what they're saying, dude. It's. It, if you look at it, it's hours. like 150 hours to 200 hours. At least hours. first week. Um, we would love to put up a wagering board. That would be fun. We think we, we definitely will. And um, if you want Atomics, if it's not difficult, it doesn't matter. Um, what was I going to say? It, I think it would be more fun, honestly, less of a focus on us and more of a, a challenge to, you know, the community out there. We'd love to see, you know, who else wants to, to try and get there first. So Yeah, I, um, I did for – I did that Guild Wars 2 one. I bet if anybody could hit 80 within the three-day head start and on day two someone messaged me and game was like, got it. I was just like, hmm, <laughs> and I gave away a Steam game of their choice. So we could maybe do something like that. But we'll see closer to launch. I mean, I just don't want anybody killing themselves and like sitting on a poop bucket. So, I we there is a couple posts Speaking out there. Speaking of poop buckets, a... <laughs> we did a quick calculation: um, ten hours a day, 150 hours of content, 15 days. Beetle. Yeah, that's two a week. weeks. <laughs> How many days in a week? What day is it? October. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's gonna take a while. I even I was like, okay, I'm used to power gaming, two three days max level. I was like, holy crap, 150 hours. If I'm planning 20 hours, four hours off, that's still that's intense gaming. 20 hours and that's still a week straight. That's not one or two days. That's a week straight to hit max level. That will be intense. Like, that's why I think that's going to be super. Uh, it's going to be an achievement, for sure. <laughs> Bucket or suck. 
<laughs> all right. Um, um, we we have hit all the questions for tonight. Do we want to talk about? There was one more from Vader. Our... Oh what? I don't yeah. need that. <laughs> she wants um, to know. Know each other in real life. Do all of you five guys know each other in real life? Well, this is Tron, so no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we we go most of us go on a first name basis, but not all of us have met each other. No. We everyone here hasn't met each other, but we've met. At PAX, go to conventions, and or have known each other for a couple of years now. So that is why we are as friendly towards each other as we are. So maybe we should be around each other. Fate's house. Yeah, the party, yeah. get a Fate's. Fate's, 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 party. Fate's, Fate's Fate. house. All right. Sounds good. Yep. Cool. Confirmed. God, I we all, almost went the entire show without saying it. There you, you go. Are, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> GG, everybody. All right. So, reveal? I'll let Roshi kind of take this away, but our reveal is some stuff that is going to be given out as prizes during the Child's Play event, and Roshi is the master of Child's Play. That was going to be worded yep. differently. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just give me a random. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. You know, that was the lock up bad wording. <laughs> Uh, phrasing, yeah. mother. <laughs> We've been um, talking with Carbine, and they're doing their part to help us, and one of the ways of doing that is they've given us these four Uber sets to give out. I believe you have a picture somewhere. Can we get that shown up? Nixus has got it. Yeah, can we have it in channel? Uh, okay. It's up. Oh, there it goes. Nope, the other one, um, the image, Nix. GG, Nix is there we go. If you can see it. Yep. So, um, if you can see there, there's like a space travel accessory bag, a nice duffel bag for everything to go in. A uh, Mission Away nested certified tote, which is another bag. A uh, ultra protective textile torso sealant, which is a carbine branded, wild style branded hood stretcher in your size. A synthetic cranial focused brow absorbing focal obscuration square. I one of these oh saw bandanas. I, I gotta stop you for a second. Did we make these up or is this actually from them? No, this is actually their stuff. A two dimensional. Jeez, these words. Us, uh, let's go for it. A laptop sticker for your <laughs> laptop and Wildstar theme. A random Wildstar t shirt like one of these or maybe the white one. I'm not sure if there's other ones in your size. A well, Another Wildstar sticker. A carbine branded pen. I bet you'll really want that one. A sticky Macari mouse mat. I'm not sure why they're sticky because. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll let, you obviously I'm need to explain that one. Um, it's flavor. A Wildstar branded USB bracelet, which looks really cool there in the middle. And the main thing, which I'm pretty sure most people are excited, not sure you can tell from the picture, but that poster has been signed by everyone at Carbine, the entire team. So this is so good, we want to keep them. So I'll let you guys ante up some money. Uh, we haven't decided exactly how we're going to give them away yet, but one of them will be given away to the biggest single donation we receive. The other three will be yeah. given away over the course of 24 hours, um, yeah. if we don't keep them for ourselves. Yeah, so hey, we get these, to the books there. So just to clarify a little bit, so during the Child's Play, we'll be giving out four sets of those. So everything yeah. in that big, big picture, you'll get inside of that duffel bag. What, yeah. Four? Four. Four of them. And yes, four of them, yep. Yeah. Foe. All right, we got Foe. And, yeah, so during the Child's Play event, that's the uh, big swag, loot bag, you know, awesome stuff. So make sure you use and the donation link. If you donate elsewhere, we can't track it. Um, so you won't see who's donating. When you in the comment section, make sure you put your name and your email address. If we can't track you down, you know, you could give us all the money in the world, but there's not much we can do about it. We only get to see your comments. If you don't get any information from charge plays, it goes directly to them. Yeah, if you... Donation down. Um, if you, yeah, I was going to say, if you look at the Twitch, the information below the stream, there is a button right there, too, that you guys can click. We're really, really, really trying to, to pimp this out. 
Um, you guys need to know that we're um, still working on holding Beetle down and dyeing his beard, potentially, for as part of the event. You guys can't see. He's shaking his head. If you're listening to this on YouTube, please come check out Twitch TV, Late Night Dominion. I do believe our button is not on YouTube. So if you're just watching us on YouTube, you weren't able to catch it tonight. Um, the donation button's there. Make sure, as Roche said, I'll put a link email on our YouTube and a upload. Name. Is it? We can get it put on there. He'll put it. He'll put it in yeah, the YouTube on there, uh, put a link. when we upload yep. it. Yeah. But yeah, just cool. again, so, be sure so to then... use our Child's Play widget so we can we can track how much we've earned, and that way we can, you know, be able to send these prizes out. Because I mean, there's these four loot bags. But we're planning on giving a ton of crap away for this. I mean, there's going to be. A lot of fun stuff during this marathon. I can like, I can like ship things in my room. I got some socks. Uh, I got like half I've an got extra a bag of creeps. chips. Um, yeah, or good stuff like here. that. We have yet. We're we, we, two hundred dollars next week given away. So go donate now. And if you're worried about donating earlier and not getting in with the other cool swag, we make sure you entered in the other donations as well if you donate early. Uh, $200 now, send a chance to win this, and maybe get in, you know, for one of the giveaways for those cool swag packs as well. Yeah, we got uh, the swag bags, but we also have a bunch of different other things, uh, depending on what games we're playing, who shows up. Um, we're going to try and get somebody dressed in a in a dress at some point in time. Maybe Beetle will have his uh, his beard tied. <laughs> Look at his face. That's great. <laughs> um, I believe uh, yeah, someone... we'll have some fun stuff going on. Beetle will probably chop an arm off. Uh, he'll, you know, drink uh, thanks, bleach. Thanks to offering Beetle. Uh, $1,000, Beetle will chop his arm off. $2,000, yep. he'll dye his beard pink one side. If he hit $5,000, it'll be green the other side. And if we hit like, 10 k he's going to do the I American hate. flag. I hate everybody. It's, you know, I, I just want Beetle with a mohawk. Mohawk. I, I, don't, even think I, I don't even think I'm going to play Wildstar cake. anymore. I'm going to go play. <laughs> I'm going to go play Halo 4, man. Beep. <laughs> oh, you probably couldn't hear that. It's powered up my Xbox. Uh oh. Oh, he jacked his stuff. We're good. <laughs> we do stuff, maybe oh, shave our hair off. You know, if you come up with ideas and we think it's a cool idea and we could put a money figure on it, we're going to do it. Wear makeup. Yep. I go nail polish, and I hate nail polish. My wife would testify. Should, I make her go to another should, room or leave the house to put it on. If uh, Nixus has to shave his head like Ragnar Lothbrook from Vikings, <laughs> you, <don't laughs> the top. you can no, you can keep the top. I think you just shave the sides, and then you gotta get some head tattoos. It's not, it's not that big a deal, but you're fine. <laughs> yeah, we, All right. we we have some interesting ideas to. <clears throat> potentially drum up some donations and along with that once we hit certain donation goals and what we'll do with the big swag bags and some other prizes and there's a there's a lot of cool stuff that we have planned so if you can get the word out let people know it's for the kids it's how we roll and uh anything else you guys wanted to mention about child's play before we uh wrap this on up no, all right they were good um again i'm gonna throw our our shout outs out there uh, Wildstar Central, that's where you can find us. We're on the forums, we're in IRC. Uh, you can always catch us on Twitter, too. All of our little ats are right there. Feel free to follow us, hang out, stalk us. Um, we also, big shout-out to Wildstar fans, cool people. And Nix is going to drop a link to Mission Nexus as part of their podcast they mentioned a little bit about our Child's Play stuff, which we thought was pretty cool. And it was uh, interesting to hear about well our... we did? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's that right. On... There's the, the interview, too. Um, so, again, thanks for stopping by. Make sure to follow the Twitch channel. Go follow us all on Twitter. Like us on Facebook. So uh, what we are going to make sure to do this time is we uh, have a collected week in review that's going to get posted up over at Wildstar Central. We'll work on that and get it put up probably about the same time the YouTube video gets up. So thanks for stopping by on Blank Space. And don't forget uh, Nixus' uh, um, Community Games Night as well on Sunday. He keeps, you know, yeah, his like, you little messages wanna... popping up on my screen saying, oh. tell them about it, tell them about it. You know? Okay. 
Well, we'll mention that real quick because it's a ton of fun, and by a ton of fun, I mean I hate Minecraft. So let's talk about community game night real quick. Nixus is our community guy, which I don't know who decided to make him community guy, but he's great at it. And he decided, you know, I've known Blankver, and he hates Minecraft. So you know what we should do? We should have a community game night where we play Minecraft. So we open it up to anybody to come along. One of the little taglines we use is, uh, you know, drop the tags, bring, bring the frags. Yeah, it's just for fun. We play a bunch of free-to-play games, uh, you know, have a couple drinks. You know, normally Beetle will shoot you in the face, and the Nagon will shoot you in the face, and I'll hide behind turrets, and they won't push their things forward, and everyone will complain, and that's in Team Fortress what Blank's, 2. What Blank's trying to say is if, you, if you're not busy on Sunday nights and want to come hang out and shoot some people in the community, um, I think Zap from Wildstar Central showed up last time. We had Onrez from Settler. And if you like to kill people in the community or get to know people, we have a raid call set up too so people can jump in and just kind of chat with us. We just kind of shoot the shit and play games. We just usually do free-to-play stuff, uh, a lot of TF2 because it's easy. And, I mean, it's just goofy and fun to play. So Sunday nights I'm gonna try and gank um, me. around. Yeah, gank it's a lot of ganking Hiroshi. And then a lot my... of Onrez getting stabbed in the back. It, it it happens. League of Legends, Smite, you know, we just play whatever. Yep. So It is a lot of fun. So it's another one of those things we're doing to thing. try and... Yeah, just one of those things that we, we try to do to encourage the community. So, again, I'm Blank Space. Uh, it's Nixus, our community guy. Roshi, Logistics, Technical Director, Atomics, and uh, Beetle. I don't really know what the hell he does, but... Uh, Thanks for stopping by the Minion. Everybody's hey, a hater. Good night, guys. See you next week.